Welcome to the Worldly Green 360 segment, where we take a look at green headlines from around the world. Our first stop is in Europe, where plans are being made to import solar and wind electricities from North Africa. Europe has a goal of reaching at least 20% energy generation from renewable resources by 2020. In order to hit this target, the European Union will invest in solar and wind energy in the Sahara Desert. The electricity will be supplied via underwater cables running under the Mediterranean Sea. The first model should be running within the next five years, providing hundreds of megawatts of electricity to Europe. The project would later increase the volume to thousands of megawatts when the Desert Tech solar project is at complete capacity. Like a mythical sea creature rising from the waves, the Britannia is the green future for English power. Clipper Wind Power Marine has plans to build one of the largest offshore wind turbines. This 500-foot tall and 475-foot wide monster will be able to produce enough electricity to power 10,000 homes. With size comes construction issue like the blades becoming flimsier. This is solved with adding more carbon to construction. The company says they have not reached 100% carbon yet, but the three gigantic blades are still weighing in at 30 tons apiece. The turbine will be built on a solid foundation of seabed with the ability to generate more than 10 megawatts of energy. Clipper Wind Power Marine says the project would be completed within two years. Jumping the ocean to North America, we find an Alaskan village powered entirely from the hydrokinetic river turbine. Alaska Power and Telephone has installed a 25 kilowatt turbine in the tiny town of Eagle, Alaska. The turbine has been made by New Energy Corp and can be found in the Yukon River. What makes this turbine unique is that it doesn't require a dam, making it one of the most eco-friendly alternatives to energy generation. Since there is no dam and it rotates at the slow speed, the local aquatic life isn't in danger of being altered or destroyed. This isn't the first project of its kind. There have been proposals for New York City, Ontario, and for the Mississippi River. It's easy to generate enough electricity for a population of 68, but the scaling of these models is no good for larger areas. However, this is still a better option for remote locations or to be used as a low-impact alternative for localized areas in need of an energy boost. Is it getting hot in here? Probably, if you live in the dreaded urban sprawl. A report from our amazing planet finds that sprawling U.S. cities heat twice as fast as denser cities. This means places like Atlanta are experiencing twice as many hot days than New York City. The reason for the hot, hot heat? Deforestation and air conditioning. The air conditioning loop is a nasty one. The cities have removed vegetation that helps keep the areas cooler, causing more hot days and more AC use. The AC use releases more greenhouse gases that cause temperatures to rise continuing the cycle. How do you break the cycle? The first step is better urban planning, more compact spaces, and creating public spaces that involve vegetation such as shady trees. Parks, anyone? We're ending our Worldly Green 360 with an update on American public policy. The Obama administration has been a vocal advocate for an energy and climate bill but has been postponed meeting with senators to figure out a Senate floor game plan. If you've been watching recent headlines, you know General Stanley McChrystal and his staff said a few things to Rolling Stone that maybe they shouldn't have. This is for the reason for the rescheduling of the important climate bill meeting. This doesn't mean Obama isn't a supporter of the bill or that he is losing interest, but this move could mean the bill will not be finished this year. One positive from the delay could be the Democrats will have more time to strategize. This move begs the question, are they ready to go forward with the climate bill, or was this a convenient excuse to push planning back? I'm Fong, and that's it for this week's 360. For an up-to-date info about the greenest news, add us on your Facebook, MySpace, or Twitter accounts. And don't forget to buy your green stock concert passes. Tickets are going fast. For ticket prices or vendor information, visit greenstocksrock.com. Have a great day, and see you at Green Stock.